Hey there everybody. So I hope that you enjoyed my last video on the introduction to signal transduction. Now what I want to do in this video is, as I mentioned at the end of my last video, I want to now talk about signal transduction and how it works in the human body to carry out tasks. And specifically for this video, I'm going to focus on signal transduction within the immune system. Now the immune system, if in case you don't know, is a component of the body that is responsible for fighting off infections. You know, if you've ever spent the weekend laying in bed because you have a raised temperature and you're really just not feeling up to your best, that's because the immune system is responding to fight bacterial infections. And there's a lot of different types of bacterial infections that can, or I just said it, there's a lot of different types of infections that affect the human body, but for this video, as I just said, I'm going to focus on bacteria infections. So before I go into this diagram here over on the right, I'm first going to introduce some terms that I hope will help make the picture at the right a little easier to understand. So the first term that I want to throw out here is what's referred to as an antigen presenting cell. Now you may not recognize the term antigen, but all you really need to know from this term right now is that this is going to be a cell in the immune system that will present this thing called an antigen. And don't worry if you don't know what that means, I'll explain it when we get into the picture on the right. The next term that I want to introduce to you is this term that is referred to as cell-cell interaction. Now, in the immune system, as well as many systems within the body, there are a lot of signal transduction pathways that are activated by the cell-cell interaction phenomenons. And for our picture in focus today, we're going to focus on the interaction between what's called a T-cell and a B-cell. And as I said, I'll get into more detail behind these cells as we explain the picture at the right. Now the, f now the final um, terminology that I want to go over is what's referred to as the major histocompatibility complex. Sounds very fancy, a lot of syllables, but don't worry, it's not as hard as it sounds. Basically, what the major histocompatibility complex is, MHC is the abbreviation, it's basically going to be a protein that's going to bind to this antigen thing that I'll get into to allow for signal transduction to be initiated. And just a key fact to understand is that um, going back to cell-cell interaction, when you get this T-cell and this B-cell interacting, that's going to be the catalyst that's going to allow for signal transduction to be activated. So with those terms out of the way, let's go ahead and look at this picture on the far right. Now when we start off with this thing, when you have a bacterial infection in your body, you don't get just one bacterial cell, you're actually getting millions and millions of these little bacterial cells harboring your body. And the immune system, there's specific cells that aren't in this picture, whose job it is to degrade the bacterial cells and leave behind these small little pieces of those cells, and these little pieces are called antigens. So to keep it simple, these are just pieces of the leftover bacteria that was degraded. That's it. Now, when this antigen binds to the B-cell receptor, known as BCR for short, it's going to then, this uh, BCR complex is going to, with the antigen on it, is going to then become phagocytized by this B-cell. And when it becomes phagocytized, it's going to be, the antigen is going to get degraded in the lysosome. So in case you don't remember, the lysosome is just going to be the place where, uh, the organelle in your cells where proteins get degraded, and we're going to end up with this fragment of our antigen, which you can just call a peptide, which you know is just a small sequence of amino acids. And this peptide's then going to bind to this weird looking protein right here, and this protein over here is in fact our major histocompatibility complex molecule. I'll just label it as MHC because we've already got the writing to the left. And when this MHC and peptide protein complex gets secreted onto the cell surface of the B cell right here, it's going to form a protein complex with the T cell receptor. And as I said before, when we get the T cell and the B cell 
having a cell-cell interaction, that's going to lead to signal transduction. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to show you a different picture down here that shows a little more detail into what happens when signal transduction is activated in the T-cells. Now this big picture right here, this is actually a T-cell receptor. It just looks a lot more complex because in reality it, it really is. Now we don't have to worry about everything going on in this picture. I'm just going to touch upon a few important things that I think are going to best summarize signal transduction. So let's first take this big circle right here, because I can summarize it all at once in a single explanation that is known as a phosphorylation cascade. And a phosphorylation cascade, again, it sounds fancy, but it's a lot simpler than it sounds. A phosphorylation cascade is basically going to be where you have a string of proteins, specifically kinase proteins, and I'll explain what that is. You're going to have a string of kinase proteins phosphorylating one another in a chain reaction. So it's, it, think of it as the very first protein being the very first domino in a line. It's going to then phosphorylate another kinase protein, who will then phosphorylate another kinase protein, and so on. So that's what all these arrows over here are basically describing, just how one protein activates another. Now, to elaborate upon what kinase is, so anytime in biology when you see a word that ends in the suffix A-S-E, it just means that you're dealing with a protein. Now specifically kinase, kinase in, in particular is a protein that will phosphorylate another protein. And if it's not doing the action of and usually, well, in our example here, one kinase protein is going to phosphorylate another kinase protein, which means that kinase proteins can also be phosphorylated themselves. And when each of these kinase proteins is getting phosphorylated, it's becoming activated, which is what's allowing it to activate the next successive kinase protein. Now, moving through these arrows over here again, once this protein down here don't worry about any of the names that I've put in red. I put them there for formality purposes, but they're all just describing the names of the kinase proteins participating in the reaction. That's not what I want you to focus on. I just want you to focus on the macro understanding of this phosphorylation cascade going on. Now, when we get over to this IP3 protein, it's also a kinase protein, but what's going to hap here, happen here is a key event. And it's going to be known as the phenomenon in which we have a ligand ion-gated channel being activated. So let's break this down word for word. So ligand is just anything that binds and activates a pathway. IP3 is going to be the ligand that's going to go to the, if you can't read that, it says ER for endoplasmic reticulum, the organelle inside eukaryotic cells. IP3 is going to bind at this uh, ER cell surface to a particular ion gated channel. And when it does that, it's called an ion gated channel because it's a channel in the ER cell membrane that's going to release the ion calcium 2 plus right here. And when calcium 2 plus gets released into the cytoplasmic environment, it's going to participate in a series of reactions that I haven't shown here for simplicity purposes. But when that series of reactions goes off, it's going to activate this other protein, NFAT, which is what we call a nuclear transcription factor, which basically means that nuclear, meaning that it's going to go into the nucleus of our cell, and it's going to bind to the DNA to initiate transcription of a specific gene. And when that gene is transcribed and translated, the actions committed by this new protein are going to allow for this T cell to differentiate into a specific type of cell known as a helper T cell. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop there because we're at the 10 minute mark, but I hope that gave you a decent idea of how signal transduction occurs in the immune system to allow your body to fight off infections. So I'll see you guys in the next video.